Welcome to the VO School podcast, dedicated to the art, craft, and business of voiceover. Each week builds upon the last to give you a comprehensive understanding of a career in VO. My name's Jamie Moffitt. I'm a full-time voice talent and audio engineer, and I'll be joined by some of the industry's top professionals on both sides of the microphone to drill down and dig up the truth. Hello, episode five. Uh, Sorry to sound suspicious there. Um, (laughs) This episode is all about coaching. And it was inevitable that we were going to get to this subject quite early on because it's something that everyone starting out needs to look at when they're beginning their career and will be a theme throughout their entire career, actually, because you never get past the point in which coaching is useful for you. We have two amazing guests on today. And I'm recording this the day after, the night before. (laughs) And that interview was, it was such a great interview. So I'm so excited to bring this to you. But first, let me do a bit of social media plugging, as I tend to always do. We're getting some follows or friendings, whatever it's called, on Facebook, which is good. So um, come and join that conversation at facebook.com slash groups slash VO School podcast. I'm going to try and add as many of the guests that we have on the podcast to that group as well. So you can, uh, if you have any, uh, you know, burning questions that you want to reach out to them about, uh, that might be a good place to speak to them. Also, we're on Twitter at VO School Pro. That's especially good for keeping up to date on um, what's coming up and any news and uh, all that fun stuff. Next week, we're going to be talking about demos. And I'd like to ask you, listeners, if you have any questions regarding demos. Any questions you like, anything that's uh, puzzling you, send them in, either via Twitter or Facebook. Or you can send me a message on SoundCloud, I think. I don't know. Whichever way, I'll, I'll get it one way or another. I'll remind you of that at the end. Uh, we do have a couple of questions this week from the audience. One thing I noted from some of the feedback is that you tend to like to include questions from the audience and I completely understand that so I'm going to incorporate that where possible moving forward. Okay so that's enough of me let's get on with the intros after this quick break. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. Angan Guza is a voice talent, coach and producer based in LA. Alongside her VO work, she helps her students to develop and grow their voiceover and business skills. She specializes in strategic target market voiceover coaching and demo production to help align each student's individual brand to meet the demands of the current marketplace. She brings years of experience in public speaking and corporate and educational training to her clients, making her an in-demand speaker on digital marketing and emerging online technologies. She's also founder and owner of VO Peeps Global Voiceover Group and the VO Boss Podcast. Since 1990, Mary Lynn Wisner and her award-winning company Voices Voice Casting has cast thousands of voice talent in thousands of voiceover productions. From the Clio-winning Chevron Talking Cars to the 13-part History, The Color of War and Chrysler, Radio Shack, Fiat, Taco Bell, Coca-Cola, Sony, 7-Eleven, Jeep, Mattel and many more, she also casts feature films, animation series and video games, audiobooks and narrations. In addition to her successful casting career, Mary Lynn has continued to direct workshops, coach, consult and direct talent all across the world. Here's our interview with Anne Ganguza and Mary Lynn Wisner.
So I'd like to start off first getting to know both of you a little bit and about how you both got into coaching. So Anne, did you want to kick off with that? Oh, sure. Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me today. I'm honored and very excited to um, be here with Mary Lynn yes, and yourself pleasure. in the podcast. So I got into coaching. Well, my my experience and my background is in corporate IT and education. And so I have about 25 years in education starting off there. And in voiceover, I started doing voiceover in 2004. And so the combination, I think, of the two helped me to be a better coach, I think, in terms of having like a curriculum, having things that I think if students gel with my coaching style, it works. There's, there's curriculum, there's, um, there's, there's some experience in there too, that really helps. And I also have another, I have the technology aspect and the marketing aspect, because I also was a uh, professor of, of social media and marketing as well. So I kind of, I, I, I kind of add that into the mix where it's the business and the marketing and the the voiceover coaching. And especially with what I do a lot, I also am still a voice talent and I my specialty is corporate and e-learning and narration. So I'm a real geek about that. And I think that helps a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean <laughs> that helps a whole a, lot. She's a pretty geek. Aw. And yes, you too, Mary Lynn. Yes. Oh, thank you. No. Seriously. <laughs> so that's great. So Mary Lynn, what about what about your history? So I I start have been coaching for close to twenty five years, um, casting voiceover casting for close to thirty years. So the way you know I started coaching because I wanted to sort of do something a little bit different in the coaching world than what other coaches were just doing, which is still important, you know, the acting side of it and, and, you know, technique with microphone and so on. I wanted to coach from the casting perspective, what I know books, um, and kind of what the other side of the, the casting side looks like with, with advertising agencies and production companies. And there was a need for that. So that's kind of how I started coaching and um, have been successful with that, uh, you know, just kind of giving actors another perspective that really helps them when they're in the booth, the booth and how to make their um, audition stand out. So my years of, of having been a um, casting director, and I, I was a voiceover agent for a short time prior to that, and, you know, an actor as well, and I also do voiceovers. So there's a lot of, you know, experience and um, expertise, I guess, that I sort of bring to the um the coaching session so that's that's kind of my mo that's amazing so between the two of you we've pretty much got all bases covered here Um, you bet brilliant (laughs) (laughs) i pick well in terms of guests i'll take i'll take the credit for that (laughs) you did yeah well you know i think we're just a product of our teachers and i'm always of the the belief that you know the more experience you can have with a coach that you gel or align with i mean the better we're you know the, yeah. like mary lynn has been has been a guest director at, at my uh workouts a couple of times already if not three mm-hmm. i'm not sure but and and you know i i absolutely love having the experience and i think it's good for the students too thank you yeah it's, a, it's fun to go there and and i agree with what ann's saying i think that um i'm a big believer in talent studying with everybody or you know mm-hmm. at least one or two times just because you learn, you learn something from everybody. Mm. Um, and if you don't learn something, then okay, acknowledge it and just move on. Don't, don't weigh yourself down with it. So I, you know, I think there's little nuggets that you can gain from each coach out there. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you go to different coaches for different things and they have different things to offer. So that makes, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So this first, these first few episodes have been looking at the different sides of the industry from the perspective of a new entrant coming in. And I'm going to sort of stay in that sort of from that perspective for this episode too. Um, And so my first major question here is, who is it that needs voiceover coaching? And is it crucial to get voiceover coaching when you start out? Absolutely. Um, But but at the same time, I also think, um, you know, if you're talking about coaching as in just one-on-one solo coaching, because mm. um, that's sort of how we define coaching. Um, that is important, but I think it's really important for somebody new to the business to actually get in a beginning workshop first, right. because or or concurrently, because um, 
you know, it's, it's supportive. You're with like-minded people that are in the same situation as you. They're, they're all starting. And it's, it's the practical things that you're going to learn in a very beginning workshop. You know, this is the mic, this is technique. You stand this close to a mic, you don't do this, you do, you know, and, and those sorts of things. Whereas, um, and you know, Anne might have something different to add to that, but the, but the coaching idea is obviously, more intense one-on-one training. Mm. And, um, I have found for me when I coach complete newbies, I always pretty much, you know, I can give them one coaching session, but I think it's really important, at least what I have found for them to just, okay, do that. Now go take a a five week class, you know, the, the, one of those, and then come back. And then we'll hone in and find your niche and, and kind of perfect what you've learned, right. because the uh, the the practical stuff is so important. And and they might find it's not something that's for them, you know. Um, mm. But at least get their you know dip their toes in the water. Yeah. See see if they like it. I agree wholeheartedly with having both types of experiences, both the one-on-one and the group setting. And especially when you're starting out, I think it's really helpful to have a group setting because you may be timid. You might be intimidated or, or, you know, when you're up at the mic. And so you have a lot of people that can identify with you if they're in the same experience level. And so you have a lot of, as Mary Lynn said, like-minded people. And so I think that's really helpful. And it's, I think that your learning experience is broadened by watching others up at the mic and being directed. And one-on-one coaching, I think is great for the customization of it. And I'm a big believer because I've been in education for 25 years. I'm a big believer in homework and that there must be something that the student does every day that is related to voiceover because a lot of these people that are coming that are new to the industry may have a full-time job, they have families, you know, or part-time job, however it is, they need to allocate time to yeah. make it a part of their their routine so that they understand what the what the career and what the industry is about. And I think I think a lot of times I would tell people that part-time voiceover is almost more difficult than full-time because mm. you have less time. Yeah. <laughs> and when yeah. you're starting yeah. out, you've got a market, there's a ton of things that you have to do. And so I think that the combination of the group workout and and a one-on-one coaching that, you know, not, you know, that can meet up every week, every week if you've got a goal, I think is good with homework, <laughs> doing something voiceover related every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. And, and when you say group classes, are we talking voiceover sp- specific classes or general acting classes? Because I should probably point out here that both Anne and Mary Lynn are both in LA. If someone's starting out and they're not in a major hub where there are a lot of voiceover centric uh, resources available, but they might be just acting classes in their local community center or something are those are those worthwhile absolutely i'm i i'm a big proponent of first go take an acting class right um even you know i know yeah. out here a lot of the community colleges here in in los angeles they have like um like a uh, two saturdays or one all day acting class or um, the other thing I think is fabulous is um, to go do an on-camera commercial acting class hmm. because the the acting that you learn in on-camera commercials is completely transferable into the booth because you're learning how to act with a product and mm-hmm. you still have to act in voiceover. And I always tell actors, bring that into the booth with you. We just forget to turn the video camera on, you know. Yeah. And it, it's it's really important, and I've seen that help actors enormously. So I'm a huge fan of that. And pretty much every city, if they don't have voiceover classes, they have some kind of on camera acting or commercial class, or even you know an improv class or some kind of acting class. So do that first, because first and foremost, it's not having a great voice. You have to be able to act yeah. and you you have to be able to bring a piece of copy to life. You can't just sit there and read it in a pretty voice. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and also when you are first starting out, a lot of people read and because we were taught to read from left to right, one word at a time for the most part. And the acting that's happening or that should be happening, really, if you're busy reading is not happening. And so there needs to right. be skills that I think acting classes would be fantastic. I think there's always you need to set yourself in that scene. And then, you know, as Marilyn was pointing, like when you're behind the mic, you can use those skills behind the mic and physicate and and be able to create a real natural believable 
kind of a sound, which is very difficult. I think it's what I think it's what we all strive for, uh, you well, know, <laughs> as voice actors to get yeah. better and better at that because we're looking at something that didn't start authentically in our words or in our heart, and so acting that is where is where that is going to bring that to life. Yeah, and that that part of the brain that that you have as a child that the imagination side tends to sort of mm. wither and die if you get as you get older oh, and yeah, we- that's where that's going to sort of come to the fore if you uh, enhance that part of your brain and that comes through acting whether that be group classes one-on-one voiceover specific or otherwise i think so yeah i, I absolutely that's totally totally on point um so assuming now that a student or someone who's wanting to get into voice acting has has really committed to getting some some lessons maybe in their local area or group classes or or one on one how do they go about finding a voiceover specific coach and do they have to be local to them or can they can they reach out to some of the more high profile people in LA New York London places like that yeah i mean you can yeah. you can reach out to anybody technology. i mean technology yeah, yeah that's- that's the beauty of it. Um, you know, Anne has these wonderful classes that um, half of the, the um, some of the students are there in person and then she opens it up to people that are all over the world. So mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like you're right there in the class. It's, it's fabulous. Um, and so most, most of the big coaches um, are available to you on Skype or Zoom sessions um, or phone. Um, and then... Um, the, as far as workshops go, um, I know I, I do a lot of traveling. I travel all over the country, uh, you know, um, doing, uh, you know, workshops that, you know, I, I'll, twice a year, or once a year, I'll go do a, a, a Saturday all day in New York and then maybe Portland or right. Seattle or something like that. So check those out. I think the best thing for an actor to do, a voice actor or wannabe voice actor is try and see if there's any voiceover meetup groups in your right, city. Yeah. So that's one thing to just just start, you know, look up a meetup group and see if there's one in there or start one. And then um, I've had several meetup groups reach out to me and say, hey, we meet up every Tuesday morning. Can we hire you to coach us all for one hour? Oh, that's you know, a great idea. Like that. yeah. and, and Anne does that too, I think. Right. And, and, yep. um, every and month. Then, yeah. So, it, so every month I have a workout with my, with my peeps group. That's one of the reasons why I formed the networking group, VO peeps, just as Marilyn was saying, it was to create that, that community and that in person and make that available as well as online. So every yeah. month I do a workout with a different, de- a different guest director. Oh, cool. It's kind of like that. This is the one career where there's kind of no excuse for you to say, I don't know how to get started. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Because yeah. it is, it is the one career where you can do everything online. I mean, it it's Unless not always not ideal. Yeah. yeah, it's not always ideal, but it's completely accessible. And even if you're not technical, it is something you have to learn. You do Very have to true. become technical <laughs> to do this job. Very true. You know, most of the time. So yeah. Yeah, and I, I make sure that my if I have a new person that I'm working with that they are they need to be adept at this. I'm a tech girl. They need to be adept at technology because that's part of the job that's part of you know being able to deliver to your client and being able to communicate and deliver and you know use the technology to run your business yeah yeah so i i want to know um a little bit about the what it takes to be a coach and you're both voice talent as well as coaches but is that a prerequisite for a coach i don't think so um because there, there are a few coaches out there that are not voice talent. I mean, it's just another, you know, feather in my cap or in Anne's cap. And, and that doesn't mean to say that's not a feather in anybody else's cap. It's just <laughs> another thing that I, it's, it's another thing that I do. Yeah. Um, it helps as far as being able to relate to know, you know, how you can get anxious when they're talking about you on the other side of the glass or, or maybe <laughs> they're not, you know, it helps just as far as understanding what the, the talent might be going through. But um, there are some fabulous voiceover coaches that um, I don't think have ever done voiceover. Right. But they, I agree. They have, you know, they have a great ear. They ha- they're great directors. Um, they might have worked in advertising. Um, they might have been an agent. You know, they might have been a great acting coach in a university or something like that. Hmm. So um, I think it helps for sure. Yes, but I don't think it's a criteria. Right. I, I think for I think that it it helps 
for me anyways, it helps me keep kind of my a pulse on the industry and what's current and what's relevant. Not yeah. that the other coaches aren't current or relevant on it, but for me, for my teaching style, I can say, oh, you know, and I can maybe relate to an audition or something that, you know, my student went through and I said, well, I had one like that before and right. this is what I did too. You know, so it, it helps me to relate and it helps my coaching style. So what do you think then makes a good voiceover coach? Wow. <laughs> I know that's a very broad question, I know. <laughs> it is. I, I, well, let's see. That's a good one. Let me just kind of like free associate here. I think yeah. it's somebody who listens. I think it's somebody who has their finger like answered on the pulse of what's what's happening, not only as a performer, but, you know, casting director like myself mm -hmm. or a producer um, who is aware of the trends you know, what's booking now, what's being asked for, or even has some insight into what might be coming down the pike. Um, and, and is very well versed in the industry, knows who the players are, who the, who the agents are, who the producers are, who the, you know, the, the rosters are, you know, knows the industry. And, yeah. and then on top of that, yes, you can know all that stuff and not be a good coach. I think being a good coach I think it is a gift. I think it's, um, you know, and I, and I, I do feel lucky that I, that I do that. Um, mm. I think that I, I, I think kind of like the coaches that aren't good because there are a lot of them that maybe have done three or four voiceovers and suddenly they start coaching. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are quite a few of those out there. They eventually sort of just, you know, fall off by the wayside because some mm. people can't coach. It's, it is, it's a, it is a talent. I think it's a different kind of skill set. Yeah, that I not agree. a lot of people have. Don't yeah, don't you think so, Anne? Yeah, and and I think it works its way. You know what I mean? It's if 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 your coaching style is not working well with students, I think it just it people can tell. That's number one. And I also think to be a good coach, you have to to have the you have to have the strength to be able to be honest with your students if they're not ready to, you know, let's say make a demo or if they, maybe they've got, you know, a, a speech pattern that needs to be corrected and, and that it's something that you can't necessarily handle <laughs> or let's yeah. say like I wouldn't coach somebody in animation because that's not my genre. That's not where my expertise is. And so I'm happy to refer, right. you know, um, people to other coaches if I'm not adept at that. So I think, and, and I think it's hard, it's really hard for coaches to, to say no right. to some students, but there will be some, some, some students that I won't take on because I know that the skills are lacking, let's say technology skills, right? If there, it's an older client that, you know, I, I'm going to be like, well, you're going to have to be able to hire an assistant to help you with this, or you're going to have to go take a class, right. you know, especially new people to learn all this. And I, and, and I think that that is important that you're honest and upfront. And that takes a lot, I think, to be a good coach. It's, it's because yeah. you don't want to, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a person who doesn't like to hurt people's feelings, but honestly, I'm not going to waste your money. Well, and, and the, <laughs> you know, I can't. Is, yeah. And what happens is, as big as this community is, you know, voiceovers, everybody's oh, it's doing, small. Um, it's actually very small and, and mm -hmm. we all know who's doing what, what's going on and where, who's where, what, what. But, um, the thing is, I look at it this way. If I'm not honest with somebody and I'm just taking their money first place, I, I have the worst lying skills and the worst, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, conscience. Um, but secondly, that person's going to go, well, I studied for six months with Mary Lynn Wister yeah. and that agent that they're submitting a demo to or whomever, they're going to say, what the heck was Mary Lynn thinking? Right. You know, that that's not right that she took money from that. So I can't do that. And again, I know there are people that do do that. Um, and it, 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 like I said, eventually it does kind of catch up. It just, you know, and I have told people over the years, this is as far as I can go with you, or I don't think I might be the right fit for you. Um, mm. and it's, yeah, like Ann said, it's not easy and you feel bad, but yeah, but I'd yeah. rather be honest and most people appreciate it. I, there's a couple of people really only maybe two that I can think of that, you know, didn't want to hear what I had to say, right. but, um, eventually they, you know, <laughs> they had to not do try to do voiceovers cause they couldn't. Right. So, yeah. That's quite a responsibility to have as a coach. I would have thought that the fact that you sort of have that empathetic responsibility f with the student, you know, even if you don't end up going on to teach, teach them. Well, it's like you're sure. crushing their dreams. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. If it's not working, it's, you, you feel like you're, you're crushing their dreams, but I always yeah. try to spin it into, there's always, there's always something. There's always, I'm the firm believer that, 
you know, you can be passionate about something and it can translate into something you love to do. It doesn't have to be voiceover, but it can be very, very similar or in a different path. So if maybe voiceover isn't quite, you know, for them, it, I've usually discovered in working with them, their other passions. And I could say, you know, maybe you should try this right. yeah. or you would be really good at. And especially because I think a one on one coaching and Mary Lynn, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to agree with me. You get very close to the to the student. Yeah. And yeah. so you get to know them on a very personal level. And so it's one of those things. It's it's kind of coach and maybe a little bit therapist <laughs> sometimes. Oh, gosh. Yeah, Absolutely. So. It's life. It's coach. It's life coach. Yep. It's therapist. Mm-hmm. It's it's mother, it's yep. best friend. Um, there sometimes with some talent, I hang up the phone and I'm just like, oh God, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, because you're, you're, it's exhausting, but, yeah. but at the same time, I love it. I just love it. You know, yeah. I love helping people. I love, I love, I kind of call it, you know, I've been called the voiceover mom because <laughs> I feel like they're my kids, you know, and, yeah. and it's the same as I am with my daughters, you know, I'm encouraging, yep. I'm supportive, I'm firm proud. and honest and proud. Yeah. So yep. when they get a booking or they get signed with an agent, I feel it personally as well. So, um, oh, you wonderful. can't help but feel that way. Yeah. And, and as, yeah. And as my, my experience in my, my teaching career in it as well too, I, I have a lot of students that have followed me over the years. I've watched them grow up and I've watched them succeed. And it's, it's just one of those things. Like I truly believe when I was a young girl and teaching my dolls in the basement, you know, that was my thing. That was my passion. Like I love teaching and I, it's just, and, and I've always loved to teach in an educational environment where you share resources. It's not, it's not about coveting. I have the only information. I'm the only coach. You you know what I mean? That sort of, yeah. I have all the information and therefore I'm the only one that can disseminate that or, you know, the light bulb goes off at different times for different people. And Mary Lynn and I might have the same end goal, you know, in terms of getting a student to a particular place, like being conversational. And I might say it one way and it, it they won't get it. And Mary Lynn will say it and they'll be like, oh, of course. So yeah. Yeah. it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> So, well, when you're starting out, you're in a very vulnerable place. I I know I felt that way for a long time. I didn't quite know where I fit in the industry and I didn't know if I was any good or not. And so a coach with that sort of nurturing side that you're talking about, I think is, is, is really important to get to have that. And so when you are in that vulnerable position, getting on with that coach and, and having that sort of intimate connection is, is so crucial. Is it wise then maybe to if you approach a new coach to say, can we do maybe one test session to see how we get on rather than maybe committing to a whole series of lessons? Oh, Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, most people do that. The most people will um, do one session first to kind of see if you gel. And um, although I do have some people, I have like a four pack that I offer, but most of the time they'll just, you know, we'll do one and and see if they want to, you know, move further along. So absolutely. Yeah, same with me. Yeah. Same with me. Yeah. I do. We always do one session just to see how it goes and, and the teaching styles and see if we, you know, if they, if they like me and, and want right. to work with me and then, yeah, I have a, I have like package deals too. So. Okay. That's great. Now this is all very positive and uplifting and everything. And now I want to bring it right down to miserable and depressing if possible. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about it earlier. There is a proliferation of predatory coaches out there there's this influx of new underqualified uh, teachers or even if they are qualified they're not offering particular great great value um Mm -hmm. let's talk about some red flags that you can look out for with someone like that how to avoid those those types well (laughs) go ahead go ahead if if i can just say if if you're going to get a demo produced over a weekend Right. You know, after a weekend of workshops, that's number one. And any promises of quick riches, yeah. I think, is a red is a, an immediate red flag. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's no you. This the it's it's acting. There's absolutely there's no guarantee of anything. I've worked right. with some talent that are so brilliant, and they still can't get an agent. They still. Um, you know, because they can't get an agent, they're not getting certain opportunities. And, you know, so it's such a kind of precarious industry. It's it's a lot of it is luck, but, um, yeah, the number one 
you you look for the red flags. Uh, you never want to take a workshop where they promise you a, a demo at the end of it, unless it is like a pro workshop. Right. Yeah. And you know you're at that level and you're there to learn you know some extra stuff and, and something like that. But if you're a newbie, you never do that. Um, you never want to take a workshop where um, they say, oh, we're going to have an agent here or casting directors, and they're currently casting this show for Disney or this or that or whatever, because number one, that's illegal. They can't do right. that. Right, right, yeah. Um, and they can't. So Yeah, so they can't do it, so you know that, that it's a fake advertising advertising yeah no right. promises of no yeah, promises of success or right. bookings or you know getting yeah. into an agency none of that should should there's, be a promise yeah there there's absolutely it's impossible you cannot say if you take our course uh, uh for six after six weeks we guarantee you will be making six figures it's impossible oh yeah the you six figure thing yeah you I, see know. That all the time. I have I to know. say the six figure thing no matter what in any context really bothers me because it just does i mean most businesses if you're not even talking voiceover you know rule of thumb is five years for a return on investment yeah and lately in this economy it's closer to 10 and i'm a, I, you know i am proof of that in terms of I mean, working and working so many, the longevity has a lot to say in this industry yeah. because the brands are not born overnight in, in voiceover, you know, like national commercials are not, they don't happen after a weekend of training for a new person. It just doesn't unless you're really well connected. And, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's a whole different, that's a whole different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're oh, we'll not well connected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What you do, what you can do is ask around, you know, if, yeah. if you're thinking of taking a, a workshop or studying with a particular co quote unquote coach, um, you know, go on the Facebook forums. There's a lot of voiceover Facebook forums, mm. um, you know, and Anne has like VO peeps go on yep. there, check out, you know, people talk and about ask. coaches and whatever and ask around. Um, basically any agent you know, to get to an agent, you know, the first thing they're going to say is, who did you coach with? Where'd you study? What have you, you know? Right. Um, and if you haven't done any of that, but you went ahead and made a demo, it's, it's a waste of your money. They're not going to, they're, they're going to say, oh, this guy has no training. They're going to make you go do it anyway. Right. So, uh, you know, you don't want to waste your money. You don't want to study with somebody that is not already influential in the business. I think that's pretty much the, the best rule of thumb to go by. Yeah, reputation has a lot to, you know. Oh, absolutely. People, yeah. I mean, it's like, like, like you said, it's, it's a small community. Like, there's a lot of people, but there's, it's a small community. Yeah. And if you ask, you're going to be told probably pretty much outright by people, you know, the lowdown. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Google is your friend. I mean, it's so yeah, easy Google's to find out friend. people, <laughs> find out people's backstory and their experience. Yeah, if you can't, if you can't research it, you know, online, I think then maybe you shouldn't. You should consider a different you know, a different <laughs> career <Yeah. laughs> because that's such a big part of it. It yeah. really is. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's not just for voiceover. It's researching who you're going to be working with and researching clients and researching products and, you know, getting all that, that knowledge. Cause it's more than just the voice and a good coach is going to talk to you about that. And it's going to talk to you about, okay, what's the brand look like? What type of, you know, what type of vocal do you think they're looking for? And, you know, that sort of thing is, is going to, is priceless. And so yeah. if you are not, if you're not motivated or engaged enough online or have that savvy, you, you might want to think, you know, about something else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, completely agree. So now let's, um, I want to bring it back to you guys. Um, Anne, you have VO Peeps and your podcast VO Boss. Why don't you tell us yes. a little bit about both of those things? Oh, well, sure. Of course. Um, VO Peeps actually was my way when I moved from the East coast to the West coast to kind of get to know people and to get, have people get to know me mm. and to have that face-to-face -face connection. And I had, you know, I'd had my background in it and in networking. And, and so I kind of combined the two together because I had done distance education uh, for the school and in it. So I kind of knew that. And so I was, I, I like to think I was the first person to stream a, a voiceover meetup <laughs> on the internet. Oh, cool. Because I yeah. thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. And in 2010, I did that from my coffee table with my webcam and my little, I'm, well, I'll, I'll say it, my blue snowball microphone <laughs> at the time. Uh, it actually worked really well. And and it was really kind of funny. And, I, and, and it was a lot of fun. And I could actually call myself a global group. And once I did that, it started to expand and grow. And that's just been an amazing 
experience. It's been an, an amazing learning experience too, building a brand and learning the business. And uh, what a better way to sh- extend my hand to Mary Lynn and say, Mary Lynn, I would love it for you to guest direct. Yeah. You know, I, I, <laughs> I mean, that is a great excuse to go meet Mary Lynn and, and, and ask to guest to guess direct for me. Why and, do you think I set up this podcast? <laughs> well, exactly. It's, it's a great way to network. And so I did yeah. that for VO Peeps. And VO Boss was one of those things that I literally always wanted to do a podcast. Mm. And I like working with people and I wanted to work with Gabby. And we're kind of business geeks. So we thought it would be a pretty cool podcast to do. And I've, I've learned a lot and uh, I'm really enjoying it. And, and we're getting a good response. So uh, that is just kind of a little pet project of mine. It's great. I listened to your uh, episode that you released. Was it today? I think about um, yes. chronic illness, disease. Yes, thank you. It was great. It was a really great episode. Thanks for listening. Uh, and Vo Peeps is an online and offline thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Vo Peeps. Yeah. Vo Peeps. Every month we'll do a workout with uh, people live here in Southern California, as well as I invite them in via Zoom. And then also there's an online membership that you can join that allows you to watch the. Uh, the workouts that have been produced for the past couple of years. So it's kind of an educational archive of like, if you ever wanted to kind of get to know like a different genre and I, and the VO peeps workouts, I mean, I don't stick to just my genre. I mean, I, I do everything promo. I have guest director for promo. I have Mary and Mary Lynn like three times already. (laughs) Mary Lynn was always selling out and um, (laughs) my workouts, which was great. So I have just about anybody that, that I think that you could imagine in in the industry, I had them as a guest director, and it's been wonderful for me and wonderful for my for my peeps. Yeah, you know, it's just been a great benefit. So everybody gets to have exposure, and it's good. It's good marketing for the other coaches too. Yeah, because people will get exposure to them in a workout, and then say, "Wow, I've ha- I, you know, I really want to work with them." And that's kind of just it's it's a cool thing to be able to host that and to be able to bring that to the community. I'm really really proud of it. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's, just, it's just fun to say peeps. Yeah, yeah right? Exactly. <laughs> it's been a fun little brand. It, it really has. It is. It's real. It's she, Anne is just a genius at the the marketing and the branding. I mean, you should, yeah. this girl goes to town. Oh, um, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's sincerely, I mean, it's, it's awe inspiring, but it's so cute. The little birdie and the peeps. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, seriously. I definitely was aware of the branding before I knew what it was, and I'd obviously subconsciously yeah, absorbed that everywhere, you know. And <laughs> Thank then, you. Yeah. And Veal Boss is a different brand too, which has been so much fun too. Like, yeah. I, it's just cool that I've been able to to do something different. It's like, wow, there's a new little like challenge for me. Yeah. So, do thank you, you for sleep? listening. I appreciate it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I actually, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to tell you one of our podcasts was how do we do it all? I hire people. I really do. I mean, oh, I'm okay. not, I can't like, I can't claim that I I have that many hours in a day. I really <laughs> don't. I, I hire about seven people, Oh wow, but that's not full time, but there seven people to do seven specific things for me. Yeah, absolutely. To help me because it's just, I, I won't, I wouldn't be able to do it alone. It's, it's a village. Right. <laughs> it yeah. takes a village. Plus she has so. the, the VO studio cats, which yes, I, just, I do. Oh my God. Oh my God. You had a picture of <laughs> Of one of your cats the other day, I had to go show my daughters. It was the most beautiful picture. I don't know which one, which it was the the you know the orange tabby one or the oh yeah the, the one mm-hmm. where, where her his or her face was so oh it was just gorgeous. Thank you. And, I, and I'm not really like a cat person, sorry, Anne. But that's okay. Uh, they have fans. It, my my it kids. was I know, and I'm a fan of them. It was yeah. just it's brilliant marketing she did. It's so cute, and I you, I follow them, and they're just adorable. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do they have their own Thank social media accounts? Yeah, yes. they do. They have, really? they have about thirty. They have about thirty-two thousand fans on oh Facebook God. right now. They have an Instagram <laughs> account. Yeah, and I sell swag, so I have oh, avatars wow. that were drawn. And yeah, see what I mean? She's, she's do like, they see any of that in the end? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Well, they they get love from me. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's all they want. That's they get love, <laughs> love, and good food. <laughs> That's what I mean. Anne is just brilliant with that. It's so it's. So amazing! It's awesome. I love yeah, it. But Mary great. Lynn, talk about talk about Mary Lynn. Yes, I <laughs> was you're amazing too. <laughs> I was going on to that. Uh, I'm, I, I, my social media skills dwarf in comparison. <laughs> to Anne's yes, ability. but you, yeah. you have your uh, meet the pros, meet the agents, and your workshops and all that kind of stuff. So why don't yeah. you tell us a bit about that? Well, um, I started meet the pros and meet the agents about let's see, it was 2008. So yeah, like uh, eight nine years ago. And I did it because, yeah, I was always doing workshops. You know, I would do like a six week workshop or whatever. And then I would, one of, one of the nights I'd have a guest come in. But what I was noticing is that, um, 
nobody was doing something where there was, you know, what the pros wanted, what working voiceover pros wanted is an opportunity to meet um, a casting director from Disney or a promo right. producer from NBC or whatever I could think of, you know, video games or whatever. And fortunately for me, because I knew these people, I know, I mean, I've been in the business so long, I've either cast for them or we've become friends, you know, from some social thing or something. I mean, I just, it, I, I'm very fortunate that I have these, some really great relationships. Hmm. So I just started to ask people that were my friends, you know, Hey, I'm doing the same. Well, would you come and be my guest? And it just kind of took off. And then I would, those I didn't know, I would reach out to them and develop relationships and so on. But it, it, it was an opportunity for voice talent that are, that are, like I said, working pros to get in front of the promo producer from NBC or CBS or mm. HGTV or whatever, or the direct, you know, face-to-face contact with the casting director from a video game company or an animation house or something. And, um, so it's been extremely successful. It's been wonderful as far as, uh, again, getting the talent in front of them and then them getting opportunities afterwards to, to maybe co- read on something or getting known. So they get requested for something. Right. And then we also started, um, meet the agent night. And this was, um, another opportunity for talent to have a, you know, one-to-one or Q and a with the agents. What is your office like? What do you guys listen for in demos? What are the, in, you know, the no's and the yeses and, you know, the, the uh, pet peeves or whatever of each office and get to know that particular agent. And um, that's been great, too, because I've seen so many talent, you know, subsequently get signed with an agency or something like that. Of course, oh, again, you can't guarantee anything. Hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's something we did um, and have been doing, you know, for these last eight or nine years. And, um, it's a lot of fun. And then, like I said, I also then go around to different, um, cities sometimes and, and, um, and conferences, Marilyn. And yeah, and do a yeah workshop. we're going to be together there too. At yeah, a couple of um, conferences coming up. Yeah. Ann and I, um, specifically always are at VO Atlanta, which is one of the yep. best um, voiceover conferences out there. And, and mm. that's great for newbies to working pros. Mm-hmm. You meet people, you can take little workshops, you can go to sessions and have a Q and a with, you know, the movers and shakers in the industry. There's wonderful panels. And casting, and casting. Yeah. Thanks to Mary Lynn, who's really, <laughs> I think been amazing in terms of helping get some good people there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I I was kind of brought on last year, sort of like in the the vi- advisory uh, capacity and helping the producer of the event, Gerald Griffin, uh, Griffith, bring bring in um, some of these great guests. So that's an awesome, awesome uh, opportunity. Uh, yeah, for, and that's in the for, springtime, for, isn't it? New, yeah, yeah, it's like March. This uh, 2018 will be March 1st through 4th. Right. And it's fun. It's just, it, it's not even like the learning part of it, but just the social part of it. Yeah, he it's does it right. Such, it's really yeah. fun. Everybody just has such a great time. And next year in 2018, when we do it, it'll, it will, the hotel will only be voiceover people. We've usually, you know, of course, yeah. had to share the hotel with other people. So it's going to be kind of rowdy and crazy, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But um, it is a fun event. And yeah, so that's, and if- that's kind of what I do. If I can, yeah, if I can just put a plug in there too, uh, yeah. VO Peeps always does a scholarship. So anybody that's new to the industry, if they, you know, they are, they are eligible to apply for a scholarship and we have three different scholarships that we give out, Gerald and, and VO Peeps, uh, for a national scholarship, an international scholarship and a youth day scholarship. So oh, wow. just to keep a lookout, that's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're going to launch that. So if you keep your eye out on VO peeps. Um, we'll be talking about the scholarship. I think I'm going to do a, fa- I'm actually, I'm doing a Facebook live with Gerald next Tuesday to kind of launch it and to talk about it. So just kind of a, 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 a sneak peek or a sneak peek. Sneak I like peep. to call it <laughs> a sneak peek at, uh, at the scholarships that are available for, for people that are looking to get in the industry. And they'll be able to find that on your Facebook page mm-hmm. group. Yep. Facebook, VO peeps.com. I, I have it. I'll have it everywhere. So okay. great. as long as you follow me or, or follow VO peeps, you'll get notified. Yeah, I mean, with your branding, it's you're pretty easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, find I, you. I, yeah, <laughs> I'd like to finish off. I've got a couple of questions here from listeners actually that I reached out to this week. Um, so, let's start off with now. I think this is Kyle Marie Colucci, but 
I think Kyle, maybe Kylie. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, this is the question. What are the biggest mistakes new voiceover talent make when they begin with a coach? Um, well, <laughs> not doing I'm, their homework. Like yeah. Like Anna's saying, that's a, that's a big one, mm. you know? Um, Huge. And, and kind of, I, I don't know that I would call it a mistake necessarily, but one thing that's frustrating to me is kind of getting in your own way. If, if I'm telling you something, it's because I'm telling you because I know it's going to help you. Right. And so to, to not, to not let yourself be helped, I think is big. And, and I know that sounds kind of simple, but it is a frustration. I, I come across a lot where I, I think to myself, wow, you're paying me to help you and you don't want to take that advice. Right. So if what's going to happen is you're just not going to grow in the business. And you have to sometimes let those inhibitions down, let that fear go, and just go for it. Because, again, I've been in this so long, I do know what I'm talking about. I'm not just saying something to say it. I'm saying it to really help you. Yeah. So if, if you don't want to take that advice to me, then you're just wasting your money. So I think that might be one of the biggest things that is I find annoying. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Right. Well, I, I think I can, I'm going to say not to be um, – not to be – so in Hollywooded, should I? Can I say that? Is that a word? That yeah. there's that, that <laughs> there's the mean. glamour of there's the glamour of certain genres of voiceover that people are, insist that they must. I must do animation, and right. so maybe not maybe not being able to look at the industry as a whole or to to kind of see the many other aspects of it, and maybe you know, not be open to that because there's lots of ways to help yourself. I think a lot of new talent have a misconception about how easy it is to get into the industry and they think, okay, I'm I, now that I've, I've done my coaching and, and I'm just going to get a demo and then I'm going to get work. And it's not like that. There's so many other aspects to it that's going to make you a successful talent and a successful business. And to have your eyes open to the other aspects too. And I'm constantly, and I know Marilyn too, constantly talking about like, it's not just the voice. You've got to be able to be business savvy yes. and be able to get out there and market. And if you can't, or you won't, or you don't want to, then you have to hire somebody to do that. Yeah. And, and you need to have, and you, you need to have a financial, I want to say a good financial um, plan. plan because mm. freelance is completely different than corporate. I mean, yeah. corporate, Somebody's paying you a very steady paycheck and freelance, you know, making that transition is really tough, is really tough uh, unless you're prepared for it. And you have like a little bit of a financial cushion that when the times are sparse and when you first start out, you know, you may not get a job for a month or two or three or six or, you know, that. And so you have to be prepared for that. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. Um, actually, interestingly here, um, following up on your answer to that question, uh, Mary Lynn, um, Kyle slash Kylie, not sure your name, sorry. Um, she says, should you go into coaching with ideas of your type in mind and practice those more heavily? Or should you trust the opinion of the coach, even if you feel it goes against your type? So that sounds like something you were referring I, I to. Would, I would do a little of both. I mean, I think if you have something in mind, it's because you're passionate about it. And yes, let's explore that. Mm. But, um, you know, there are some people that they think they should be the next, you know, Porky Pig or Mickey Mouse or whatever, and they're yeah. not very good. And, and you know, mm -hmm. you have to kind of tell them, and I think you have to be open-minded, and, and that's why you go study with a coach. The, you know, in the end, here's the thing. Like I was saying earlier, you may have these dreams and aspirations, but if you don't give it your all and try and see and, and you know, dip your toes in the water in the different genres – whether it be video games, audiobooks, e-learning, telephony, whatever, commercials, you don't know what you can do or what you're capable of. Right. Um, I mean, who wouldn't mm. want to be a star in a cartoon? Right. But, you know, so you, sometimes you're just not good at it. And so, you know, don't waste your time. Or you might live in the wrong city, you know, to, to do that. Well, kind of that, thing. that, too. Yes, so, that too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, take the advice of your coach mm. and, um, you know, let them know what you want to do and, and see if it, you know, if you can if you can do it, but then it's, I think it's also va valuable to learn all the other genres because first place, Oh, I agree. Every, every agent, the first thing they're going to ask you is let me hear your commercial demo. Right. They don't mm -hmm. care. If you only want to do animation. Commercials are the bread and butter of our industry. So you have to have a commercial demo done first. And you know, they, that's why if they want to represent you, they want to make sure, yes, he can do commercials. Okay. 
maybe we could help him with animation too. But mm. commercial's the most important thing. And and also understand that if you're not in LA or you're not in one of the the, the large volume markets, understand that, you know, commercial is a great industry to be in, but there's also a heavy 90% narration market that's right. out mm-hmm. there that can ha- that you can be earning money so that you can in parallel be focusing on on you know maybe doing narration and then being able to 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 continue your work and your coaching in a commercial or animation or promo whatever the the Hollywood grandeur ideas that you have and that you want in your dreams that's great but yeah. do it in parallel with you know being open minded about other genres like telephony or narration and that's what I, I I wholeheartedly support that. And and if somebody comes to me right away with I I want you know I want to do promos or I want to do animation. Number one, I wouldn't coach them in animation or promos, um, but I would talk to them about the other aspects and the other genres and and different ideas and how they can they can build their business while still pursuing you know the other genres. So right. yeah. Well, speaking of that practicality that you talk about there. Adam Giles asks, how much should you expect to pay and is there a standard? For coaching, yeah. private coaching? Yeah. Um, I, I think the going rate is anywhere from 150 to like 250 an hour, depending yeah. on who the coach is. Yep, right. that's about right. Yeah. Okay, good. Well that's that's answer that. <laughs> Yeah, we all. I think we all. I think we're all in the same. We all. We all have to be in the same kind of genre area. To, to yeah, be honest yeah. with you, we all have to be yeah. in the yeah. same realm of, of cost. So yeah, I mean, there are a couple of coaches out there, and I don't even know that they're necessarily coaches. They're kind of like celebrity coaches, if you will. That um, I know, there's a, one or two of them that charge like five hundred an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But oh, I, yeah. I think it's, I think it's because it's not like they really want to be known as a coach. It's more about. Right. Okay, well, if you want to learn from me, this is what. Okay, great. Well, all right, great. You'll pay it. Okay, but they're not necessarily coaches per se. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they might be mentors or you know, kind of a, accountability or or consultants that sort of thing. And that may be another one of those red flags if mm-hmm. they're charging significantly under that, <laughs> under the. Well, yeah, right? <laughs> actually, good Absolutely. point. Very, very good point. point. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks both of you, uh, Mary Lynn and Anne, for joining me. It's been a great chat, and I think there was some a whole plethora of information there. There's so much to, to take in, and I'm sure everyone's been taking a lot of notes, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having us. I yeah, appreciate it. it's been great. Okay, there we are. Episode five. Thank you so much to Mary Lynn and Anne for their incredible wealth of knowledge that they brought to this podcast episode. Um, There's so much there to really take away. Remember to connect with them on their social media and their various uh, platforms. I think that's the correct word. So Anne can be found at VO Peeps. Uh, She's across social media, as we talked about. And Mary Lynn is owner of Voices Voice Casting, and also she has social media accounts as well. So Mary Lynn Wisner, both of them are pretty easy to find. Um, so yes, be sure to send me over your questions for the next episode, and I'll try to include a couple of them. Um, it's all about demos, the next one. So uh, if you have any questions regarding that, send them over to me. And that's it. We're done. Episode five, roll on episode six. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again next week. Thanks. Bye. Thank you to this week's guests, Anne Ganguza and Mary Lynn Wisner. Thank you also to our sponsor, J. Michael Collins and Backstage Magazine. Join us next time for another class. <laughs> <laughs>